Emily Frankel's novel, Circle of Ivy. Chapter One, Cal's Cookery. Stand tall, fat lady, and head for your table, Ivy told herself as she opened the doors of the restaurant. Ivy Grace Moore Morley had called herself fat lady so often that it gave her no pain. It just blurred like her reflection in the glass doors of Cal's cookery, faded like the noise of the honking cars, snow tires and chains in the February slush, became part of the general buzz of the customers at the other tables, devouring their Sunday breakfasts. The waitress suggested a table near the cash register. This table all right? Ivy indicated her usual table next to the window. How about over there? As the waitress handed her a menu, she glanced at Ivy's summery outfit, bare legs and sandals. Gee, aren't you freezing cold? Ivy noticed the girl's name tag. It's really not that cold this morning, Eloise. You're new here, Eloise? Started Thursday. You're a regular, huh? Ivy nodded. You're a student, right? Senior at Ann Arbor High. Eloise held up her hand to show off her engagement ring, a proud little sparkler on a slender gold band. Four months till my wedding. Cal's baked up a bunch of Valentine's Day tarts for tomorrow. They're still hot, real good with coffee or a latte. Ivy, seeing her waiter serving a couple in one of the booths, opened the menu and said, I think I'll wait. It was the same menu she and Mama had perused every Sunday, last time two years ago. It seemed like a minute ago. But time for a bereaved daughter is told by a clock with hands that don't seem to move. A Sunday waffle was a way of being with Mama even though she was gone. Across the room, her waiter was chatting with the couple as he refilled their coffee cups. The first time she'd noticed him was Easter Sunday last year. He was calming a little girl who'd hurled a bread basket at her mother. <laughs> He'd gotten mother and daughter both laughing and eating again. Ivy felt a change in the air as her waiter approached her table. Pretending to look at the menu, Ivy nervously recited to herself Mama's favorite poem. Be the gladdest thing under the sun. Touch a hundred flowers and not pick one. Ah, hi, he said. What are we having today? The usual? Well, the specials are tempting, but, uh, but Sunday isn't really Sunday without a waffle, is it? He chuckled. My mother always made Sunday waffles before my brothers and sister and I came down to breakfast. Up until now, they'd only exchanged menu and weather chit-chat. But when Ivy said, you're from around here? Suddenly a river of words it was. Questions on her lips, on his lips, answers with his words fleshing out hers. Both of them saying yes at the same time and laughing together. He said he was 35. I can't believe I've been waiting on tables for more than a year. She said she was 36, stuck in a rut at the bank. He'd gone to Ohio U, she'd gone to U of Michigan. He'd majored in education, she'd majored in business administration. He was trying to be a writer. She said, so you're writing about your youth? We can't be a writer or whatever till I figure out who I really am, and that's not easy, is it? Ivy found herself expressing something she'd never expressed before. The child in you, who used to sing and shout, whispers now to remind you of what you wanted to be. Yeah, wow, yes, great way of putting it. You live... 
top of North Willow Hill Road. He knew the area. He lived on Oak Street, furnished room with a hot plate. She asked, so what are you thinking you might write about? I'm trying to figure that out. Tips I make here and all the leftovers I can carry give me three golden days a week, hunt and pecking away, mostly filling the wastebasket with discarded pages. And you? At the bank. I'll bet you're not a cashier. You're an executive secretary, right? Well, assistant to the vice president at Michigan Mutual. My boss Marvin and I handle mortgage deals. When I'm not working at the bank, I'm helping my friends at the Washtenaw Woman's Club. And you love helping people. Methinks you're your boss's lucky charm. When she blushed and shook her head nervously, he laughed, a delightful laugh, his smile resting on his cheeks in comfortable crinkles. He said, so your boss, this Marvin guy and you? Quickly, she said, it's not a relationship. We've, we've worked together for a long time, but Marvin's married, not happily, and he and I, we, hey, you don't have to explain. There's reason and grace behind everything you do. He placed his hand, a calloused workman's hand, lightly over hers. Your smile tells the story. He stood up. Oh, I gotta go. When did he serve her? Waffle crumbs on the plate? Strawberry stems? Empty little cups for butter and for syrup? When did she eat? Reaching for the check, Ivy saw his name in the upper left corner, stiff, bold, capital letters, Evan Michelin. Evan Michelin grinned as he headed towards his customer, saying, See you next Sunday, Miss Ivy Grace Moore Morley. He knows my name, my whole name. It stunned Ivy. Yes, I'll be here Sunday, Ivy sang out. In a trance almost, she gathered her things and left the restaurant. In the parking lot, the handle on the car door was like an icicle. Inside the car, Ivy Morley sat stiffly, hands on the wheel, trying to hold on to what Evan Michelin said for just another second or two, trying not to feel the shape and weight of her body, trying to keep away the heavy feeling that made her want to lie down and sleep, be asleep like mama. And that's the end of chapter one.